Jeep um, getting ready to take down the gas tank um, this is a 73 as you guys know um, which does have a at least what appears to be a slightly more simple evap or evap system um, so there's two lines that go to the tank and they attach right on the side of the tank up here where you can't see up there and then this this is the fuel line right here which attaches to the fuel pickup sending unit and then this is the vent line that runs up to the front of the car to the charcoal canister um and these just come down onto the floor from the little uh liquid check valve thingy that's up in the cab in the back so i've labeled these and uh it looks like the tank is relatively straightforward take out the bolt here and then a bolt on the back, or I guess what would be on the front side of the tank, facing the front of the vehicle, and there's another one over there. Um, and then the other side, there's a fuel filler and then a vent line. Yeah, there it is. And there's where it was. And there's my rusted out rear floor brace. Uh, it's a bit of a bear to get out, I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, it's not awful. I mean, relative to modern cars, it's a, bre a breeze. But um, this little guy back here uh, kind of holds it up. And then there's two, that one there, and this one. You loosen those, and it drops back, and then you kind of have to rock it towards the passenger side to get the filler and vent line to... These guys to clear the frame. Um, it, I will say it is easier if you can disconnect these at the pump because these, you can see where they hit the frame right there. It didn't want to come out. It almost broke off the. I don't know if it almost broke it off, but it it bound up. It made it hard to get out. So all right, I'm gonna keep working. All right. Um, so here's the top of it. Uh, this is mine, at least. For, is a returnless system so it sucks the gas up through here and then uh, that's it if you had a return style system there would be two ports on your carb or maybe two ports on your fuel pump i'm not sure which but either way fuel would come in go to the engine from one hose and you'd have a second port on here for the fuel coming back from the engine but this is a returnless system so there's only one hose for fuel um, this is where the uh, fuel sending unit goes for the fuel tank, or fuel tank, <laughs> for the fuel gauge. Um, and that's this little wire here. Uh, mine wasn't really hooked up, it was just sitting here, but something to keep in mind if you're pulling this down by yourself like I did without a, a jack or anything under it. This is going to be bolted down. Um, so don't just let it fall. It will rip that loose. Um, you can see mine's hanging pretty low. It's got a lot of slack in it, so probably would have been okay. But who knows? It might just fall off. Um, and here you can see the filler line, and then the vent, and then the emissions um, hoses here. All right. And uh, despite draining eight gallons of gas out of it, there's still at least a gallon or two still in it. I can smell it, and it's sloshing around. Alright, so I guess next we'll get this thing off. Um, <laughs> it's starting to rain already. Okay, rain stopped. Um, so this put up a little bit of a fight, but kind of get the idea of how it went together. So this thing just sits down in there. This goes in. Um, block of wood, a screwdriver, and a couple of blasts of PB blaster. Honestly, getting this hose off was the hardest part that was welded on there. But let me show you what else. So, that's part of why the fuel gauge didn't work. There's literally nothing there. That and it wasn't plugged in. And you can see the 
shape of this thing if it'll come out. Anyway, you get the idea. There's holes in it. That's the float for the fuel tank descending unit, obviously. Oh, it just fell off. So it's in the tank now. And there's the pickup sock. But I'm going to shine a light down in that tank. There's still quite a bit of gas in there. Now there's our prize. Not much of a prize. To be honest, I'm surprised the car was even running on this. That thing is so clogged. But anyway, it's out. Okay, so I'm packing it in for the night. Um, the tank has to live in the back of the Jeep for now. I don't have a place to store it. Don't have a garage. I can put it in my basement, but then my whole house smells like gas. So I've kind of sealed up the ends here. And uh, the benefits of having rust holes in your floor is you can route the vent lines and stuff right back out of the car. I really don't want the inside of the car smelling like gas, and I certainly don't want fumes building up in here, potentially. So the tank, I did, I, like I said, I got this out. You, you know, you kind of saw the shape of it. Um, there's still a few gallons of gas in here. I don't have anywhere to put it yet. But um, I can tell, I can hear that there's quite a bit of rust in the bottom of the tank. The float goes up and down. There's supposed to be a whole system there to vary varies the resistance and does all that stuff. That whole thing is rusted off. It's in the bottom of the tank. The float fell off. It's now in the bottom of the tank. It doesn't float, so it sank. Um, and there's rust in the tanks. So I don't know. I'm these. I'm gonna have to get a new sending unit uh, pickup. These are about forty to sixty bucks, depending on. You know, Parts Dude, uh, Jeepster Guru, those guys have them. Um, I couldn't find one on Rock Auto. But I'm also worried about the tank. The tank itself seems to be in good shape. Uh, there's no rust holes in it. Um, but I'm trying to figure out, I'm thinking, is it worth the time it's gonna take to get this clean? The varnished gas, I can see, I stuck a light in there, I can see all the way around is full of old gas. Uh, it's like stained on the side of the tank. So stuff's probably gonna continue to be a problem even after I flush it. So I don't know. What do you think? Should I drop some money on a new tank to avoid the hassle? Do I fight with this one? Try to make it clean? Um, I don't know. I gotta research. I'm pretty sure these are anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks depending on where you get them. Got some research to do. But it's out. Um, I know why the fuel gauge wasn't working now. That wasn't connected. The wires are broken and the sending unit's disconnected. Rusted away. Um, it needs all new rubber. This is actually in decent shape, this hose, but these are pliable, but they're all cracked up here. And uh, this is where the little liquid guy lives under here. So if you pull that cover off, there's a liquid check valve in there. It's just a little canister with uh, the three connections on it, the two that go here and the one that goes up front, the red one we saw earlier. But yeah, got some thinking to do. Hey folks, uh, so I broke down and ordered a new gas tank. I really just don't want to deal with cleaning that one over and over and over again. Uh, get the scale and the amount of rust that's inside of it. Um, 120 bucks, um, about 130 shipped from four wheel parts. Uh, this is a Crown Automotive part number. Picked up a new sending unit from uh, Jeepster Man. I think jeepsdemand.com. This is about $25. It's the uh, international version. So uh, it's the cheaper one. It comes with all the ground wiring, sending unit. Um, it is a return style. I could not find one for this Jeep that was a returnless, which would be what the factory setup was. So I'm going to, I think, use one of these vacuum plugs, rubber caps that came on the emissions vent lines here, and just plug that off. I don't need it, but I don't want it venting through that either. It also came with a new sock, a gasket, lock ring. So I'm gonna get that in. Uh, I'm also, as you guys have probably noticed, cheap and lazy. Um, so I'm gonna reuse all this rotten rubber for now. Uh, <clears throat> mainly because I don't have any on hand and I want this in the car. I'm tired of uh, every little project being delayed because of something. So I'm going to just reuse this for now. It needs to get replaced, to be completely honest, but I'm going to reuse it. Uh, this tank, this will not be the last time this tank is installed. It's it going to come out again. 
uh, I want to wire wheel and uh, do some rust conversion on the frame. So I'll do new rubber lines at that point. Um, the, I did order new mounting hardware. There's some rubber grommets that go around this. Unfortunately, four wheel parts uh, is having some struggles right now with their customer service and whatnot. So uh, I wasn't able to get the parts and I'm not able to find out why. I just got a refund and uh, but I guess that's the good part, right? I got my money back either way. Um, everything else showed up and they were, you know, they had good prices on stuff, so I'm not gonna knock them for that. Um, and this is the other mounting location here. There should be a rubber grommet for each of these. Um, the ones that are on the Jeep are pretty hashed, but I'll reuse them. Again, it's gonna come out in the near future anyway. So let's get this installed. Um, one thing I noticed is this one, there was no ground on this. I, I, there must have been at some point. Uh, otherwise the gauge wouldn't have worked but this one has the ground so I need to find a place to ground it um, I'm thinking it will reach down here I may just ground it to the body through this mounting bolt but uh, again I have no idea if that's gonna work but <clears throat> I, I did test the gauge uh, I did some work on the gauge and it does not work and uh, got a broken wire back here for that as well this white wire that I've stripped um, so that needs to get reconnected and then I should have functioning fuel gauge as well. So we're gonna get this in and uh, scratch it off the list. Okay, so I got the tail light out. There's just three, this one wasn't connected, these two were. Um, the lens, I didn't take the lens off because I don't have to and I'm terrified of breaking it. Uh, so here's what you get. This all looks more or less factory. Um, there's been a couple of splices in here. This is the actual fuel tank wire sending unit wire here. It's been spliced. Um, I did fish it back up. So now the other half of it comes up here and here's the part coming from the dash. Someone's already patched it at some point. But I'm gonna throw some heat shrink on it. I've got a, you know, butane soldering iron. Um, and I am going to stick these back together. Uh, I mean, I think in all reality, I should probably cut this off and not put another patch right next to it. But um, I'm kind of worried the wire may not be long enough if I cut out that much of it. So, to me, in all reality, this is all going to have to be gone through for real at some point anyway. So, stick it back together and then uh, drop it down on there. Good to go, I think. Okay, so I stink at soldering, so I'm not going to show you the solder joint, but there it is, heat shrinked, heat shrunk, there it is with heat shrink on it. Um, I did give it a good solid tug, it's not coming apart, uh, at least it's at least as solid as this butt connector. Um, Alright, so next I'm going to pull that snug, I might throw some electrical tape around that bundle, um, kind of like we've got back here, but up here where all these connectors are just to kind of hold things stable and uh and i'll fish it it's this like i said it's this wire here i'll get the tank in pull it tight and make sure we don't have any snags that it will still reach and uh i think we'll be done okay that might be a little bit overkill but i taped up a ton of it tucked it back up under its little rail in there i taped it all the way back to the stuff i actually ran the tape goes down about six inches into that cavity as well just because i don't want it rubbing through uh on that corner so i'm giving it a little bit of protection there although it's been there since the 70s and it's mostly intact but I'll give it some help and uh yeah nothing happened down here except now i've got a little more slack in my wires all righty so this is Getting ready to go back in. I got fuel line, vent hoses hooked up again. These are shot, need to be replaced, but they're not. Um, I ended up having to, that's my vent cap for now, I'll go ahead and find something better. Luckily, it's very easy to get to. Uh, one thing I did notice is the sending unit did not come with the retainer nut for the wire that's here. Again, this is the the wire for the uh, sending unit. Yeah, so I 
found one in my stash, but get that fastened down next time. And then this again, I'm gonna ground it to this or through the mounting bolt that goes through there since it is long enough. Alrighty, let's get going. Alrighty, so there it is. Installed professional installation. Um, I got the uh, lines hooked up. I ran them back up through that retainer. Got them hooked up again. Uh, the vent line I never did take off or the charcoal line. I did rehook the fuel line. I even found one of the original clips and clipped it back up to the frame. So that should be golden. Uh, I, I did end up grounding it to that bolt, the ground for the sending unit. I have no idea if that's gonna work. But uh, I did notice one difference between the tanks. Uh, the one that came out of it, you can see how that kind of angles up. That mounting tab is bent up on the original tank. The replacement tank did not have that. So I actually had to take it down and bend it up with some pliers to make it fit in there. And I got it close enough. You crank it down with the bolt and it goes back into shape. So there it is. Um, in there, it's a lot harder to get in than it was to get out, but it's in. So I guess now we just need some gas and test it out. Okay, so it took a bit of cranking, but she's running. Fuel gauge is registering. It's only got about four gallons in it, so it's just on E. Well, listen how quiet it is. And it actually revs. Yeah, it's amazing what having six functioning cylinders in your six cylinder engine will do. Uh, so far, the only leak has been this filter. And uh, I should have put the new hoses on it, but I didn't. So yeah, I'm gonna let it warm up just a hair and then uh, shut it down and check the leaks. All right, so I think I'm gonna call that done. Um, got a functioning fuel gauge, functioning fuel tank, pickup works. Um, only leaks so far under the hood, uh, at least in the fuel system, everything else leaks. Uh, is the fuel filter and that a couple more turns on the clamps took care of that so uh, and she's smooth running on six cylinders again still smokes like a chimney but um, I'm hoping maybe to get it on the road blow some cobwebs out you know that'll clean up or not I don't know hopefully but uh, super glad to see it running again here it's um, smoother than I thought it would be and I'm happy the carb settings work I did pull the uh, idle mixture screw out like another quarter turn to help even out the idle. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and we'll turn the camera on again when we've got some more updates.